For today's tool tip, we're going to look at stairs, how to insert them, and how to make custom configurations. Select Insert, Stairs and Ramps, or select the Stairs icon. The catalog has a variety of stair styles and widths ready to insert. Let's first insert a straight stair and review the information of that stair. I'm selecting the three foot wide straight stair notch stringer from the catalog. The stair attaches to the cursor. If you right click, you can evoke the insertion option dialog box. This gives you the opportunity to insert the stair at a set distance away from other objects on each side. Helpful when you're inserting a staircase in the middle of a room and not against a wall. Click OK in the dialog box. Left click to insert it on the design's desktop. Stairs are a continuous command and another staircase will immediately attach to the cursor. When finished, inserting the stairs, right click and select Finish. To review the properties of the stair, left click to select it and then right click and select Properties. There are a variety of stair types depending on the construction method. Other than the ramp types, the properties for each type are the same. Ramps just have a height variable. Overall height and riser maximum rule over the other properties. The riser maximum should be set in accordance to the local building codes. I'm going to change this to 7 and 7 eighths. With the overall height set to 9 feet, the total steps will not allow a value there that may be higher than the riser of 7 and 7 eighths. When I try to alter the total stairs to 11, it will disregard the input and an alarm will ring to warn you that that can't happen. You can't alter the riser height value. It is automatically calculated by the total steps and the overall height. The tread run value can be altered to any depth of tread that you need for your design. The last variable, show riser, when unchecked will allow for an open riser stair style. The diagram to the left will help you understand the variables and the model preview to the right will update with your selections. Let's review the layout tab. Based on the variables set on the basic tab, you can now alter the layout of the stair. Let's start with the parameters. From the basic tab, it copied over the number of stairs value. When you insert the stair, the midpoint of the stair is used as an insertion point. The position offset lets you move the stair left or right by a given value. A positive value will shift the stair right and a negative value will shift it left. The stair width at the lower point of the stair and the upper end of the stair can be different widths. The stair will flare according to the values you insert in each. The upper offset value lets you angle the stairs. The bottom of the stair will remain at the same position, but the top of the stair will right angle by the positive number you insert and left angle by the negative value you insert. The last variable is how the stairs will be built with either a front bottom or under connection to the floor above. The front of the stair meets up with the floor in the location above. The bottom of the floor above will meet up with the stair to form the last riser of the stair. It is one riser less than the other two options. Under removes the tread of the last stair and it is under the finished floor of the floor above. Now let's look at the preset layouts by clicking on the button. All the options appear and by selecting a graphic, you change your stair style to another layout option. Notice when you change the layout to a radius layout, the parameter options change. The width must remain consistent throughout the entire stair run for a radius stair. A new variable, radius, is added. The value must be larger than the width of the stair. I will put the model preview into a 2D view to best illustrate this variable. By right-clicking in the preview, you can see the preview in different view types. See the difference between an 8-foot radius and a 5-foot 8 radius. The Layout tab also allows you to build segments of stairs and put them together. By clicking Add, you can add another stair or landing segment to the existing stair you created. I will add a rectangular landing and click OK. Now there are two segments in my list and the one that is highlighted will show their parameters below. For landing, the option that is new is Adjust Width. If checked, it will automatically adjust the width of the stair that is attached to it based on the width of the landing options. You can click Add as many times as you want to keep adding sections to the stair or delete out any sections you don't want. Now let's look at the Details tab. The size and angles of the treads, stringer, and landing can be altered here. 
The graphic to the left will guide you with each option listed. Ensure that each property matches the values for the construction materials that you will be using. The cut line option gives you flexibility to personalize the appearance of the cut line mark on the stair. You can change the cut line's position, size, angle, and style. You can also hide it from view if you want. You can preview your changes in the model preview to the right. Click OK to update the stair. I hope that makes your Envisioneer designs one step easier.